I'm blessed, and uh, man, I'm so honored. Um, I'm blessed and I'm honored to be back here. Number one, uh, it's really kind of rare when you get the opportunity to come back to a place that you've been at before. Um, just being back here at Chapel Hill and so many great friends, uh, so many great memories, uh, being here for two years in 2015 and 16. Um, it's an honor when you're able to come back to a place that you have very fond memories of. Um, you know, when I left uh, five years ago, I left because there were some family dynamics going on that I wanted to make sure I was able to look back, you know, on my career and make sure that I did everything right by my family as well. Uh, so I decided to take, take a step out of, of college uh, coaching, football, um, not really knowing whether I would get back in or not, to be fair. And um, it's, been really, uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, the last five years I've been with ESPN, and, and so when Coach Brown called, uh, this was one of the jobs where I always said if I was going to get back into coaching, it had to be the perfect fit with the right people. Uh, when I got this call from Coach Brown, he hit it on the head. He, he asked me if I'd be interested, and uh, there was no hesitation, number one, because of my fond memories of, of being here at the University of North Carolina, but two, uh, being with Coach Brown. Uh, we, uh, we go back a long ways, and uh, I really, truly consider him to be uh, one of my great mentors, and, and uh, you talk about a guy that's done it right his entire career. Uh, it, it's been amazing. You know, I always believe things happen in threes, great things happen in threes, and we were together at the University of Texas, uh, had great success there, uh, learned a lot from Coach uh, in my two years with him there before I went to Iowa State uh, as the head coach. Then we worked together at ESPN, which was time number two, right? So he worked for ESPN and I worked for ESPN, where we were able to stay connected and, and do some different things together in TV. And now this is time number three. And um, so I'm excited about it. Uh, excited to get back into coaching, excited to be with Coach Brown, excited to be at University of North Carolina. Um, I could probably go on and on uh, with that. but. Uh, just so excited to be back, so excited to kind of get back and meet the players, talk with the players. Uh, if there's one thing that I probably miss the most from, uh, from being out of coaching is players and player relationships. That means a lot to me. And uh, so I'm excited about that part. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a great five years for me personally. I've stayed up with a lot of the football, working with ESPN and – doing a lot of things with football. Um, so I've stayed really connected to the game. But uh, the bottom line is I'm just I'm excited to be back. I don't want to keep belaboring the point, but thrilled to be here, honored, blessed. Um, and with that, Mark, I'll, uh, I'll kind of open it up to any, any questions you may have. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. We will begin with Dina King. Go ahead. Hey, Coach Chizik. Uh, my question is, have, have you had any time to see – uh, the team's performances from light this past season? And if so, what did you like about it? I've seen just enough. Uh, and, and again, this is probably one of the priorities, uh, you know, moving forward in the next couple of days is to really evaluate uh, the players that you've got. So uh, I've seen them play a, a couple of games that I put on film and had a chance to watch. I think it's a very talented group on defense. Um, it's been really good to be able to kind of meet some of them uh, in the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, but you know, anytime you have a talented group on defense, um, you got a chance. And uh, I feel like probably the biggest thing that I've seen in the little bit of tape that I've watched is just the inconsistencies uh, that creep up now and then. Uh, I think that's been kind of the Achilles heel. So. Uh, it, in anything defensively or offensively, everything is about, you know, being consistent. Uh, so I'd say that's probably what I've seen. And that's probably a 10,000 foot view without having dove, you know, without having yet um, being able to dive into the, you know, what I think can be, you know, changed. Uh, but I see a lot of talented guys and I see like a lot of guys that want to be great at their trade. And in this day and age, you got to want to be great. Football is a tough sport. You got to love ball. 
Uh, and I think we got a bunch of guys that uh, definitely love the game. I think we got a guys, a bunch of guys that are, that are very talented. I think Coach Brown and his staff have done a really good job of recruiting players defensively. I think our the long and short of it for us is to make sure that we're more consistent. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, when you were here last time, you used to use the word catastrophic often. That was one of the missions of the defense, to limit the catastrophics. This defense last year gave up a lot of catastrophic plays. So what is something that you must do immediately to kind of fix that so they don't give up as many catastrophic plays? That's a great memory, Andrew. You, you got a really, really sharp memory. They'll be hearing a lot about the word catastrophic plays. Uh, Yes, so that's kind of what I've always, you know, uh, built the foundation on of, you know, defensively, and it goes back to the consistency message, right? Not giving up catastrophic plays, catastrophic passes, catastrophic runs. What does that mean for people who don't know? It means simply when you're giving up plays of 50, 50 and 60 yards, uh, there's an issue somewhere. And typically that's used, Typically that happens because you've got, you know, guys with eyes in the wrong place or there was miscommunication. I thought I should have been here, but I, you know, I needed to be here. Uh, so those are catastrophic plays. And again, if you can look at inconsistencies of defense and when those types of things are happening, it usually boils down to a communication gap uh, or it usually boils down to a player or several players having their eyes in the wrong spots because football offensively these this day and age is very tricky um, there's a lot of moving parts to it especially with the tempo offenses now so andrew thank you for bringing that up because maybe if anybody's listening to this player wise they're going to know that that's going to be coming in one of our very first meetings limit the catastrophic so uh i hope that wasn't too long of an answer but um i think that kind of covers how i feel about it Truth be told, when your name first came up, that's the first thing I thought about because that was something that you stressed <laughs> so much back when you were first time there. So good to see you again. Take care. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, uh, over to Michael Coe, please. Hey, Coach. So when you were first announced as the new hire at Carolina, there were a lot of former UNC players who were really over the moon about it. Ryan Switzer is one that I can remember um, being really happy on Twitter. Have you heard um, anything else from any of your former players from those 15 and 16 teams in the time from then to today? Yes, it's, it's really been, uh, I've, I've really been humbled uh, by the, the, really it's kind of an overwhelming response uh, from a lot of the former players. Uh, just been really cool. A lot of them have reached out. I've texted them. Haven't talked to them directly, uh, but we've uh, indirectly, indirectly have communicated. Um, Mitch Trubisky was one of the first guys to reach out, which was really cool. Switz, um, tech with, talk with Jeff Shopmer. I mean, it's just been, uh, it's been really humbling and really, uh, I appreciate it. You know, I had a, I had a great two-year stint here, and I felt really connected with those guys, um, with everybody on the team. It wasn't just defensive players because my goal in coaching is never to be one-sided, right? I feel like I always want to get to know and have relationships with everybody on our football team. Uh, every kicker, every punter, every specialist, offense, defense, walk-on, scholarship, doesn't matter to me. It's really important because I think this is a relationship game. Uh, and so it was really cool for me to be able to uh, receive some of those texts from guys. Uh, I was very, again, humbled and, and very appreciative of them uh, reaching out and I told them I can't wait for them to come back uh, so that I can get together with them personally. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Aaron Beard, go ahead. Hey, Gene, good to see you again. Um, I'm curious when you're away from the game a little bit in terms of the coaching part of it, but you were connected to it, you know, in TV work and so forth. I'm wondering how much maybe you kind of evaluated things you used to do and maybe in your head played out. Well, if I get back into coaching, I want to change this approach or maybe update this part. I'm curious how much you were doing some of that during your uh, time away. Yeah, great to see you again, Aaron. Um, good question. Uh, it's, it's been really interesting because, you know, the last five years, even though I wasn't in coaching, I treated every off season. So during the season, uh, I was so busy with TV that, you know, that was every week. Um, but I was able to, in the off season, every off season, uh, 
clinic with different people, both offensively and defensively. So what I would do is I would actually bring people in and literally sit down with them for two or three different days. Offensive guys talking about the RPO game, the tempo game, everything that's changed. What are they looking at? What do they, you know, what do they, what do they like? What do they dislike? And then on the defensive side, I was able to bring in a lot of different guys, speak with them, corral them for a couple of days, uh, and talk defense, talk about changes they would make, what they like, how they've evolved. So believe it or not, not coaching actually gave me more time to do that. Uh, and I feel really good about um, keeping up with the game. And it's really, it's really interesting, after 2016, uh, there was some kind of the next evolution of what I was going to do uh, at the University of North Carolina defensively anyway. I liked what we were doing. I felt like there was a lot of things we could do better and improve. I felt like we had the culture set uh, where we needed to go. And then I, and then I got out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is what my plan is, is, is look, everybody's got a voice in the room, and I want to hear everybody's opinion. I always have a saying that says, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. And so uh, I want to be able to bring in guys and be able to talk to guys, and I want to put together a package that's going to have the nuts and bolts of what I'm comfortable with and what I've always done. Uh, but I'm always uh, I'm smart enough to realize that being a good listener and learning from other people, we can put together the best of the best in terms of what we feel like scratches every itch that you need to have defensively. There's nuts and bolts of things that will never change. This game is about tackling. This game is about attacking. Uh, this game is about execution. Uh, limiting, as we talked about earlier, the catastrophic uh, and, and big plays, right? So that's going to be the nuts and bolts of everything we talk about. From the day we set, that we set our, our, our feet on that practice field, it's going to be about attacking. It's going to be about fundamentals. It's going to be about tackling, because no matter what happens on the field, those things never change. If you're not good at a combat attack mindset, if you're not good at tackling, if you're not disciplined and accountable to where and how you fit in the defense, you have no defense. And there's a saying that I always say, the star of the defense is the defense. The star of the defense is the defense. And so it's a team game. So those things will never change, uh, but I'm certainly going to tweak, add to, and change the things that I think uh, need to be done to give, give us the best chance to win on a weekly basis. Thank you much. Thank you. Luciano, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I hope we're doing well, and thanks for your time. Did Thank this you. recruiting class play any role in your decision to come back to North Carolina? Uh, could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yes, sure. Did this recruiting class play any role in your decision to come back to North Carolina? I was excited about the recruiting class, and uh, obviously Coach Brown and, and the staff on all sides of the ball have done a remarkable job in recruiting, uh, but that didn't drive my decision. Uh, as I said earlier, the two things that were the driving force behind me getting out of TV and coming back to coaching was A, getting a chance to come back to the University of North Carolina, and B, reuniting with, with Coach Brown and not really in any particular order. I was extremely excited about both of those. Uh, it's really amazing though, leaving here for five years and coming back and meeting some of these players and looking at the bodies and, and looking at uh, just kind of how the recruiting classes have unfolded. Uh, that's, that's definitely a perk, perk on the job for sure because uh, they've done a great job with that. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, however, that did not drive my decision. Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Gene, welcome back. Um, I wanted to follow up on something you said in your, your answer to Aaron there. Uh, Larry Fedora was quite vocal and open with us talking about how after the 2014 season, before you came in, uh, that there was almost kind of a, a toxic atmosphere on the defensive side of the ball. And he's laid out all the steps you guys went through that off season to rebuild culture and the foundation to have the success that you had in 2015 and beyond. Um, curious, you know, are there any concerns about what you're stepping into? And then beyond that, 
What's the key to building good culture on the defensive side of the ball in, in terms of accountability? Uh, great, great questions, Greg. Um, here, here's the thing. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what the culture was and things of that nature um, this past year. Uh, I know when I came the previous time, uh, that was one of the challenges that we faced, and I, I feel really good about being able to tackle those type of issues. Um, this is not rocket science, Greg, and it's like anything. I don't care if you're talking about a family, a business, a team, a church, you can name it. Um, everything is about communication. Um, everything is about respect. Um, and when you build culture, if you ask me what is the most important part of building a culture, it's trust and communication. It's that simple. You don't need to tell a player he's this if when indeed you think he's this. Uh, it's listening to people. As a leader, it's making decisions that you think are best uh, for, for that side of the ball or this team. Um, and it, it's, it's not complicated to me. Uh, it, does, it does require a great amount of communication. It does require a great amount of listening. And I, I, I feel like one of my good traits is, is listening because uh, I want to hear, I want to know. Uh, I want knowledge and I want to make decisions based on that knowledge. So we're going to do that with the players. We're going to do that with our assistant coaches. Um, we're going to build a culture of trust. Uh, it takes time. That doesn't happen overnight because they have the word coach in front of your name. And I don't expect it to, and I don't, I want to earn trust. I don't want to be given trust. I want to earn respect. I don't want to be given respect because of a title. Because I've seen a lot of dudes with titles that you can't trust or you don't respect them just because they have a title. So we earn that. That's what we earn. Uh, and I feel very confident we'll be able to do that over time. It won't happen overnight. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, uh, over to Adam Smith, please. Hey, Gene, uh, just curious, you said, and Max said too, there was, there was a little hesitation when uh, he called to offer you the job. Were you in any way surprised by the call? I mean, uh, did he catch you off guard at all? What was it like when you, when you took the call? Uh, Adam, yeah, it was because a lot of times Mac and I just talk about normal life stuff or what's happening. You know, we've talked over and over over the years. Uh, and I'm going to be quite frank, I didn't watch the uh, bowl game. I, I, I just didn't. I had a lot of things going on there. And we, my wife and I were doing some traveling. Uh, and yes, it, it kind of caught me off guard just because I really didn't know what was happening. Um, but I did not hesitate, as Max said, as Coach Brown said, I did not hesitate. Um, I wasn't really prepared at that moment for that because I had no idea that, you know, the circumstances were what they were. Uh, and I was prepared to get back into coaching. Uh, I've been preparing for that. And like he said, I've had uh, several opportunities over the last several years um, to take several different jobs. But I'm in a position in my life right now where I can wait and take the perfect one that fits what I want at that moment. And this was the perfect one. And all of the, all the ones that I've said no to and, you know, all of those scenarios, uh, this was a no-brainer yes to me. And um, it was just a blessing. And it was a blessing of, a, of some answered prayer if, that if I was going to go back into this business, which is a tough business, that I could go back into it in an environment that makes sense to me. And this made all the sense in the world. Thank you, appreciate it. You got it, Adam. All right, Brandon P, go ahead. Hey coach, uh, how extensive is pre-snap communication in your defense? And do you want everybody to be communicating or do you designate a few players to do all the talking for everyone? Well, number one, Brandon, yes, communication is key. Um, what you really want is you want a healthy mix of that, right? You, you definitely want a lot of communication, but you have to remember that the more communication that you're requiring from players, the more chance there are for miscommunications, right? So you want the vital communications to have to happen between groups of players, 
um, that's non-negotiable, and it's absolutely critical pre-snap. But to say that 11 players are going to be communicating to each other uh, every snap, pre-snap, uh, is not the way this will uh, unfold. The critical parts of communication that have to happen will unfold, uh, and it's a huge part of this defense, and any defense for that matter, but you know, on any de given defense called, uh, there could be two or three things that may be communicated with different segments of people, and we expect that to happen. But again, you know, you want to try to, I call it clutter, you want to try to eliminate the clutter as much as you can. Defense is a reactionary game, and these guys need to be able to be great reactors. So you don't want to bog them down with a lot of clutter, uh, but there are certain communications that absolutely are mandated that have to happen uh, so that you don't give up those explosive and catastrophic plays. Okay, let's go to CL Brown. Hi, Gene. Um, I was curious, what made you say what 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 made you say you wanted to bring Coach Warren with you? What 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 about Coach Warren? You know, uh, it was what what just prompted all of that? I'm I'm curious. <laughs> Well, number one, it's always great when you've been with a guy before. And when uh, Charlton and I were together before, uh, I leaned on him for a lot of things. Um, you know, when you play great defense, it takes a lot of great people to be on the same page. Um, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever been around. It's been really interesting in his journey uh, when we kind of parted ways for different reasons in 2017. Uh, he's learned uh, a lot of different concepts and things that are very interesting to me. Uh, he's been in a lot of places that have played really, really good defense. Um, and when there was a possibility of me bringing somebody, uh, it was a no-brainer. Uh, this is the guy that I wanted because I know what he means to me in the room. I know how he treats players. Uh, I know how he coaches. You know, great teachers are uh, – great coaches are great simplifiers. That's the bottom line. Great coaches are great simplifiers. And if you can have a guy right now that can coach the defense where the players feel like everything is very simple, then they play faster. So I got a guy that I know is a great teacher. I got a guy that I know is always in the room with me uh, and all the other coaches. And he's all in. He's a team guy. So no matter how it unfolds, we can have disagreements. But when we walk out of the room, we're all on the same page. Um, but he's very intelligent, very smart, great football coach, great communicator, great recruiter. Uh, this was a no-brainer hire for me. And I think once Coach kind of heard where I wanted to go with this, you know, he kind of dove into it himself, and he realized, wow, this is the guy. This is the right guy. So uh, I'm really excited that, uh, that Charlton is back here with me. And the more you talk to him, the more you get to know him, you, you'll all understand why. And I'm not uh, trying to push Coach Mack out by any stretch, and this may be a better question for him, but I, I was curious, too, if there was any discussion about uh, this possibly being a coach-in-waiting situation, like the future, because, you know, obviously he can't coach forever, and uh, with your experience, it seems like you would want to be a head coach again. Zero discussion about that. I, you know, I've got one uh, – I've got – this one mindset, and this mindset is I want to come back to the University of North Carolina. Um, I want to enjoy myself. I want to have a blast. I want to put a great defense on the field for the University of North Carolina and Mac Brown. And that's, that's, all that, that's all I care about. That's all I focus on. Uh, there's been zero discussion about that. Uh, we will have zero discussions about that. Um, I'm just blessed to be back here, and I've got a singularly, singularly focused mind right now, and it, and it is on that and that only. Um, but, uh, you know, Coach Brown has had faith in me and brought me back here, and, and he's given me a job. He's given me a task, and I have a lot of allegiance to that, and um, I feel very strong that, that we're going to get this job done on the defensive side of the ball uh, the way he envisioned it. Thank you. Thanks, CJ. Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Chizik, good to see you again. Um, my question is kind of a two-parter about recruiting. Um, first, your what is your 
what is going to be your approach to recruiting this time around in terms of, you know, being a defensive coordinator, taking a little bit different role than some of the position coaches, um, how will you approach recruiting? Uh, and what is your approach to recruiting just as a, as a coach? And secondly, obviously um, with a different scheme, a new scheme and how you like to run things, how will that change the type of player um, you recruit? Because every coach, every coordinator kind of runs their own thing and needs different types of players. Good to see you again, Ross. Thank you. Um, yeah, great questions. So number one, my, my role in recruiting and, and the way I will approach recruiting is like I've done every time, right? I mean, the, the bottom line is when you're evaluating players, there's two things that, that are the most important, right? Number one is fit. It's a fit, right? So if he doesn't fit, I'm just talking about not just skill set wise. Uh, is he a fit academically? Is he a fit for the culture of what we're trying to build? Is he a fit for what we're looking for defensively uh, in terms of mindset and competitive spirit and nature? That's huge. Uh, so number one is fit. Number two is does he have the skill set uh, at the position we're recruiting him for to be elite? We want this defense to be elite. Uh, we want this defense to be one of the best in the country. Uh, we want it to be the best in the country. That will always be our goal, and we want to be elite. So if the young man fits that, uh, we're all in, and uh, I will, uh, I'll be a lead recruiter along with everybody else. We're going to recruit defensively as a village. We will recruit as a village. We will make sure that everybody in that room is responsible for recruiting every defensive player because when we have a guy come to the University of North Carolina, as a recruit, I don't want him to have just a relationship with Charlton Warren or just a relationship with Tim Cross or just a relationship with Tommy Thigpen. I want him to have a relationship with every single guy on our defense because relationships are everything. So we will recruit as a village. I feel very strong that we know exactly what we're looking for when we evaluate talent. And I'm not going to come in here and act like I'm reinventing the wheel. They've done a tremendous job of evaluating uh, and developing guys. So I just got to come in and just pick up where they left off, uh, which should be, um, it should be challenging, but it should be fun. Okay, got time for two more here. PJ Morales, go ahead. Hey, Gene. So, you know, working with uh, Coach Brown, I guess, over kind of a decade and a half ago at Texas and then, you know, getting to see him at ESPN again, um, you know, has is that relationship changed? And now being back here, you know, in 2022, like how has that relationship evolved and how do you think it's going to be different coaching with him now versus coaching back at Texas? Uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a lot of, you know, differences to be honest with you I mean coach Brown is coach Brown and those of you that know him well you know what he's all about you know he's about business he's about getting the job done he's about no excuses um, that's never changed I mean over the years we've definitely had some in-depth talks about our journeys um, and that's been really good but um, you know I've kept up with coach we talk every year so I mean every year and, and usually several times a year about different things and obviously I've learned a lot from him uh, you know we've had talks about you know when we were working for ESPN we would have dinner or whatever and we talk about things that have changed in college football how we how we would approach them differently uh, if we were to jump back in things of that nature um, but Mac Brown is Mac Brown he's never changing uh, I don't suspect he'll be any different uh, at the University of North Carolina than he was when I was with him at the University of Texas Man loves to win. I mean, that's what he does. He loves to win and he hates to lose. So uh, I'm very aware of what his expectations are, what his standards are. Uh, and my goal is to make sure that I come here and uh, give ourselves defensively every chance to, uh, you know, make him happy and achieve those goals of, um, you know, him being pleased with what we're delivering on the defensive side of the ball. That's the way it was at Texas. I'm sure that's the way it'll be here. Okay, our final question for Coach Chizik will come from Taylor Vipolis. Hey, Coach Chizik, you mentioned the the nuts and bolts from that 2015 team. Players on defense always talked about your ability to get guys from just memorizing a playbook to actually going out there and understanding football. How important is that to your coaching philosophy to have players who can think two to three steps ahead? Well, Vip, first of all, it's great to see you again. Uh, 
Taylor played for us when I was here and was always one of my favorite, and I knew you would be successful. Uh, so good to see that you're in the media world. I'm getting out, and you're just now getting in, at least for the last couple of years. Anyway, great to see you, Vip. Um, that's the name of the game, right? I mean, the name of the game is being able to take a playbook, being able to take a concept, being able to take um, you know, some sort of technique or method and make sure that these guys can execute it at a high level and do it fast. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, um, great coaches are great simplifiers. That's our job. So if a guy runs a 4-5, if you're putting on the film and he's playing at 4-7, then something's not right, right? So uh, our number one charge is to make sure that if they, they run a 4-5, they play on film as a 4-5. Uh, so the number one thing defensively is always whatever the guy's skill set is, make sure that that skill set is showing up on film, maximizing his skill set on game tape, on game day. And so, and, and that's our job. And a lot of that job, Vip, is removing the gray. So it's, there's nothing worse for a defensive player to go, well, you know what, um, I, I kind of see what you're saying. You know, our job is to remove the gray, be great simplifiers, and let these guys' skill sets kick in on the field on game day. When we're doing that, we'll have a chance to play really good defense. If we're not doing that, uh, then, then that's when you play poor defense, if that makes any sense. Thank you. All right, Coach, that's the last one we had for you. We appreciate your time today. Uh, Mark, I want to, uh, real quick for everybody, uh, I want to introduce Charlton Warren. I know you guys have probably read a lot. Um, the question was asked, why? Why Charlton? How? What? Why? Um, but Charlton and I have kept up over the last five years talking football as well. Talking football when he was at Florida, talking football when he was at Georgia, talking football when he was at Indiana. So this is not like we're getting together and we haven't seen or spoken in five years. But when I had an opportunity to bring one guy, I wanted to bring Charlton Warren and it was a no brainer. Um, you're gonna see, you're gonna meet him, you're gonna talk to him. Most of you have already done so. Uh, at some point, if you were here several years ago. Uh, but this is a guy that is an up-and-coming star uh, in college football. And I'm just glad that when I made the call to him uh, that he was interested. And um, he is smart. He's a great recruiter. He does everything defensively. And more important than anything, the players are going to love him. He's direct, but he's fair. He communicates well. He's a great teacher, and I am so blessed that he left a defensive coordinator spot to come to the University of North Carolina as the co-coordinator to help me coordinate this defense. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so blessed that he's here, and um, I just want to introduce now uh, for you guys that don't know him, Charlton Warren.